Falling in love and falling out of love and making a fool of yourself or having a triumphant moment or having a, a moment where you think you're just going to die. I mean, it's all of that. It's all of that. That's really what the movie is. She's an actress living in London, 1938. For God's sake, don't torture yourself like this, Laura. <laughs> no one will ever know how much I loved him. He was my earth, my moon, and all the stars in the firmament. Very successful married, has a son. At the beginning of the story, it's really come to a point where she's lost. It's just I'm, I'm near to breaking point. Everything's so tedious. I want something to happen. What? I wish I knew. You know, they've been together 20-odd years. The fire has gone out. The, the original fire has gone out. It's become something else, their relationship. And I think probably they look for Certainly in our story, Julia is looking for that fire, looking for that passion, which is essential for her as an actress. He's an American, son of a friend of a friend of Eddie Gilbert's. I can't say what that's got to do with me. Well, he admires you tremendously. Oh, he sounds frightfully intelligent. What's his name? If we don't make things happen, sometimes I think they sort of happen to us. So she falls in love. She has an affair with a young guy who's sweet and who adores her and she falls completely in love. Could I ask you a favor? Can't give you any more room, if that's what you mean. No, 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 it's, uh, I wonder, would you, would you let me have a photograph? Of course. Gee, that's well of you. She's an actress who, she's got everything. She's got a great career, she's got her own theater, husband, son, wealthy. She's got everything from what she wants, and yet she doesn't seem to be happy or fulfilled, you know? She's like looking for something else, and when, my character comes along, he sort of fills that gap, you know? And for a couple of months, they get on really well and have a lot of fun. I thought you were such a shy young man. When am I, uh, when am I gonna see you again? You want to see me again? There's something about it, doing this, that you can't take your eyes off her, you know? She looks amazing, and everything she's doing is just really perfect, really fitting, you know? So you would, a younger guy would definitely be attracted to her because she's so vibrant. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm Michael Goslin. Good afternoon, Mr. Goslin. What are you going to do for us? I thought I'd do something from Twelfth Night. I get involved with Tom, and I get involved with Mr. Goslin, that's Sean and Jeremy, um, uh, Julia's husband and boyfriend. If you could get her to see me in it. Is that all? Consider it done. I can get Julie Lambert to do anything I want. She oh. wants out of my head. The part's yours. She's very, very ambitious. Very ambitious. Um, but unfortunately not very experienced. And she doesn't know that. So she thinks she can play a game that she can't really. I think it's a bit of all right having a young man send me flowers at my time of life. I mean, it just shows you. Hmm? How do you know he's a young man? It's probably over 80. Go to hell. No, she's a very dogged, quite dour, cockney, London character, you know. She's quite tough. But she's absolutely committed to her mistress. You know, she absolutely loves this woman. She serves her by day as a maid and the evening as a dresser. She, she, Julia is the very centre of her life. You know, I don't think she has a lover or a husband. She certainly has no children. Her whole life revolves around this other person an odd state at the moment. It's as if, it's as if the curtains come down on Act One, but I have no idea what happens in Act Two. I, I'm in a sort of limbo. Although they are mistress and servant over 25 years, which is how long they've been together, they have found some uh, equality, some natural equality has sort of, uh, you know, developed between them. And although the class is system never changes in England, you know, it remains always intact. But nevertheless, they find ways of having a, quite an, 
quite a sort of strong intimacy in their own very particular way. Now that's the real thing, Julia, or my name's not Jimmy Langton. But I've got some notes. You're still going over the top. You've got to learn restraints. I'm a character who is the manager of a provincial theatre, and I'm the one who makes Annette Benning into a big star. I turn her into a brilliant actress. And for Christ's sake, stop crying, will you? We all know you can turn your tears on or off like a tap, so turn them off, will you? <laughs> Look at me. You really are crying this time, aren't you? I can't deny you didn't move me, but you've got to learn to do it. So that it seems real. <laughs> seems to be real. That's the art of acting. So this bloke, he's like a ghost. He's like in her mind, and whenever she's thinking, he's just sitting next to her and he talks to her. This film tells a story of somebody, a lady, a very talented actress, who is fighting for new energy, who is fighting to keep herself in competition. Remember that young chap I introduced you to? Which young chap? Young American. Good-looking fellow, remember? No. <clears throat> Wanted to learn the business. Tom Fennell's his name. An American, you must remember. Vaguely. My favorite relationship is between the husband and the wife. And I think it's a very sophisticated relationship. They both know that each other have little flings and dalliances. And yet they adore each other and continue to be faithful to each other in their way. I think that's very grown up and very attractive. I was a rotten actor. Yes, but you have presence. The audience always gasps when you come on. It's his dazzling good looks, you see. What will appeal to people and to audiences about this film is that they will, um, they will have fun with us for a couple of hours. Um, they, they will fall in love and they will feel the betrayal and they will feel the, 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 the delicious satisfaction of a, uh, of a very um, uh, uh, brilliantly designed revenge. Deep down, I can't help feeling certain contempt for that boy. He's so transparent. She makes a lot of mistakes. She sort of stumbles around like we all do. Um, and sometimes she gets it right and sometimes she doesn't. Only through going through considerable kind of heartbreak and heartache and self-questioning, which is what happens to her in the story, does she kind of emerge with a sense, a stronger sense of identity about who she really is at the end. Are you expecting a guest? Shall I lay another place? No, thank you, Antoine. I've decided not to go to the first night party. I want to dine alone tonight, quite alone. It's very rare that one reads a script and, and is, uh, experiences such pure joy as I did when I read Being Julia. It's a romp. It's a souffle in a way. It's, it's a bit of entertainment. Although it's set in the 30s, I think it's, uh, you know, the emotions are contemporary. The 30s in England, theatre life, actors, dilemmas what it's like to be an actress on the stage. Ambition, pure ambition. <laughs> it's an interesting story about the emergence of a woman. It's just a real story about real people. It's got some great performances in it, some wonderful English actors. The story has resonance. <laughs> <laughs>